I, I never hated the Giants. Never. I never hated. Just like I don't hate the Mets. Never hated the Giants. Most, I'd say actually more of my friends were Giants fans than fans of the team that I root for. Mm -hmm. um, no ill will toward the Giants, but also no emotional investment. So the way I watched the game last night, the prism through which I watched the game, is far different than some of the nut jobs like, you know, Sean Morash, who's going on there with a bag on his head today crying. Uh, Tig, I'm going to give you a quick, because you're the giant in the room, so I want to certainly step out of the way for you, but quickly, a quick non-emotional Giants read on the game. Go ahead. The Giants are going to be fine. This was not the year for the Giants. Today. I don't care how bad the NFC East is, and it's putrid. <laughs> the Giants were never going to backdoor their way to the champion, to a divisional title. What's going to happen? Too many deficiencies. The Giants, once they make a move at general manager, and, you know, I've been saying this for a long time, they've got a coach who is now beginning to implement a culture. It's not Joe Judge's fault that Ingram couldn't catch the ball. It's not Daniel Jones's fault that Ingram couldn't, you know, catch the ball. <laughs> so from a non-emotional point of view, I think the Giants are going to be fine. Look, the Giants fans who are upset and they're ready to get rid of Evan Ingram and they've been frustrated by his lack of explosion, his lack of health. Um, he's a young kid still. I know he should be getting it by now because he's three years in, but... That just is what it is. He, he's just not quite good enough. M will he evolve into something? Who knows? But right now, he's not quite good enough. Or at least he doesn't have the urgency to know when the plays that matter are going to matter. And it's really every play, but you know, <laughs> in particular when you tip an interception or when you drop a wide open uh, you know, ball that could basically end the game, you're not aware of the importance of the moments that you find yourself in. And they depend on him, let's be honest, because they don't have a ton of – you know, great weapons. He's a mismatch, uh, but he just hasn't been able to come through in those critical situations. You know, earlier today I was, you know, you know, chatting with friends about this, and here's the reality, BT. Mm -hmm. They're just not good enough, yeah. right? They're just not. They're not. It is what it is. They're not. You know, like they're never going to be elite this season. We didn't think they were going to be elite this season. It's a new coaching staff. It's a new. It's a new um, uh, system. There's a lot a lot of young players and so i hear the giants fans and they start screaming and yelling they're they're supposed to be good but they're not going to be good at least not right now take when you generate um collectively as the giants have over the past three seasons prior to this one mm -hmm. the absolute worst record in the nfl <laughs> it, it's a little more than wow maybe this coach is kind of swimming a bit well, maybe the gm had a singular rough draft it's all-encompassing. Yep. You don't have a lot of talent. You don't have the right coach. You don't have the right passion. You might not have the right IQ. And you add it all up, and you come up with the fewest amount of wins encompassing a three-year window, which is what the Giants have before this year. So it, it takes a long time. You know, take any historically bad friend, whether it's the Browns, whether it's the Knicks who are still in this ridiculous 20-year malaise, whether it's the team that I root for on the other side of football. They're a mess for the last decade. You don't just come in, click a button, and say, okay, this is how it's going to be done, and yeah. then that's how it goes. It's, it's a process. You've got to see who can I cut through that maybe didn't flourish in the previous regime, but I see a redeemable, salvageable quality. I'm going to keep this young man. I think he could be an asset, or conversely, nope, doesn't have it, not locked in mentally, not tough enough physically, not smart enough, whatever it might be. Uh, this is a year of evaluation, uh, you know, certainly for Daniel Jones in year two. Saquon Barkley ripped up his knee. Shepard's mm -hmm. been banged up a lot. And, 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 I, and I trust me, this is not to say, uh, you know, what? I, I'm not an excuse maker, especially for a team that I, I don't have any emotion invested in. I really, truly think, I think that I view the Giants as objectively as I view the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> I really believe that. And, you know, their path is very different from the team that won because the team that won has a recent Super Bowl championship. Granted, they have a different quarterback, so that's an entirely different dynamic who makes all sorts of mistakes, mm -hmm. but then does these tantalizingly amazing things. Uh, yeah. His skill set is through the roof. 
Conversely, what do we make of the Eagles? I yeah, mean, they yeah. should have lost the game. They played terribly Look, until the, the final five minutes. I, I'd be more discouraged if I was an Eagles fan than if I was a Giants fan because up until think about this, BT, until the last six minutes, they scored ten points. Now I know the Giants' defense is good. I mean, like let's let's you got to give credit where credit is due for the New York Giants. Their defense has been playing good football. Mm-hmm. Yes, they made they make some mistakes and they made a bunch, you know, in those last six minutes. But you could also chalk that up to just great plays by the Philadelphia Eagles finding the right mismatches um, that, that, that made the difference in the game. But the Giants' defense is good. And so you give them credit, but at the same time, the Philadelphia Eagles uh, and Carson Wentz, who's paid like he's a superstar, yep. just hasn't been good, BT. No, he's, man. he's thrown three more Sloppy. interceptions than he threw all season last year. And we're only seven games in. And, you know, I, I know that, you know, technically they are in the, in the, in the driver's seat of the yeah. NFC East at 2-4-1, and one, uh, half a game ahead of the Cowboys, who haven't played yet, obviously. But, you know, technically they're, they, they're right where they want to be, but they're not. This team is is smoke and mirrors uh, with the, the with the Philadelphia Eagles. We know that against the better teams in the NFC and really in the NFL, they're going to lose those games. Uh, they're, they're they're not going to have a young team that's not ready to win, just not quite good enough yet uh, to give it away uh, like the, like the Giants did to them. So I mean, the Eagles and I look at them and I say, how can they they get better? We know how the Giants can get better, right? It's some of those young players just making some plays, staying healthy. Um, your offensive line, which is I mean, as maligned as it gets right now with Andrew Thomas looking, uh, you know, uh, really bad. Uh, take, um, I, take. I, I, I do. Uh, <laughs> sound the alarm. You drafted the wrong guy. I, I mean, he drafted the wrong he's guy. Still, he's still a rookie. I it's, understand it's, that. It's hard to. Wrong like, guy. It's hard after seven games to say, yes, that's true. But, God, it just feels like it's going that way. <laughs> yeah, it, I just, and I, by the way, see, I'm not saying that he can't morph into a serviceable yeah, player. Agreed. I'm not burying agreed. him for good. But, but based on Beckton and, 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 and Wills, I mean, there, there's other guys. That are, yes. I mean, Andrew Thomas looks like a turnstile. He's yeah. getting destroyed every yeah. week. Yeah, I don't know if he's confused. I don't know if he's just that. I don't think he's athletically inferior. I mean, he played at Georgia. He doesn't you know, look that quick, though. He doesn't. And I thought I, he was quicker than I, this. I, I agree, BT. Now, maybe it's just that he's, he's thinking too much because he's... He's he was slated to be the right tackle, correct? Right? Yep. And, and yep. obviously, uh, uh, because uh, Nate Solder opted out, he had to go over to left, and you know he's put in the hot seat, you know, as a rookie. And interestingly, though, if you're going to be good, like think about the Dallas Cowboys and mm-hmm. some of those guys that you know three or four years ago that were rookies and slated and jumped right in, they were fine. I mean, they were Pro Bowlers right away. Yep. You kind of know. Quentin and, Nelson. Yep, yep. You kind of know, yep. uh, and and right now we we don't know. But 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 my point is, the Giants have issues, and you know that they're young and they're going to get better, and you can see where they're going to improve. I don't see where the Eagles improve. Um, you know, you, you call on Don, Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson is going to get healthy, and yeah, he's going to be a difference maker, yeah, maybe for half a play. Half he's thirty three. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. No. He's not Deshaun Jackson that was a you know a, a threat anytime he touched the ball five or six years ago. It's just not like so. Where are they getting better? So as interesting as it sounds, because the Eagles won this game in heroic fashion and are atop the NFC East, I actually am more worried about the Eagles than I am about the Giants, I, which is crazy to say. I don't I don't really disagree. I might have a solution, but because we, I don't think that Andrew Thomas's name will come up the rest of the show, I just wanted to give you this one stat before mm-hmm. I get um, pretty much to join in with what you just said about the, the state of both the Giants and the Eagles. So... Uh, let's see. Andrew Thomas played all 55 offensive snaps versus the Eagles after a benching last week. I'm reading this. Jordan, mm-hmm. uh, uh, how do you say R- Renan? Is it Renan or R- yeah, Renan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Renan. Yeah. Okay, it's Renan, right? Yeah. He, he tweeted this. So, obviously, late for a team meeting, blah, blah, blah. Finished with a 43.8 pass block win rate. Ooh. Now, the, uh, the average fan's like, well, uh, that doesn't sound good. But that means what? if you drop back 30 times, you're losing 15 of them. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, true, true. Right, maybe like a 16 little, of them. I was going to say uh, a <laughs> little, little more. Uh, but here's a little more perspective. So on the 43.8% pass block win rate, which is wretched, the league average for offensive tackles is somewhere in the 87% range wow he was 43.8 wow just to get that out there okay uh listen that's uh, I, I, that's that's horrendous i'm not looking to bury the young man mm. i do believe that 
There are some similarities. You know, there's never a bad time for a little golf analogy. When you're working on something and you bring it through slow and you're thinking, I'm like, all right, I got to get my hands here. What's it? Got to get the leg. And, and then you hit the ground first before you hit the ball. Mm-hmm. You're not you're not flowing. You're not playing. You're not, you're not doing what got you to this point. You're mentally mechanical. Mm-hmm. There could be something to that going from the right side, going to the left side, being a rookie, but the disparity in play is so wide. I'd be very worried if I'm Giant fan that, that you may have drafted the wrong guy. Eagles, you know, Teak, this is going to sound outlandish. Not a hot take. I'm not trying to generate. I mean, I, I really believe this should be on the table. Trade Carson Wentz at some point. Hmm. Why not? I mean. Why not? The you just is- yourself said that everything around him, and I don't disagree, yeah. is not good. Yeah. So what's the quickest? You drafted a quarterback in round two. You theoretically have somebody in place. Now it'll be a four-year deal because you don't get that fifth-year option for a second rounder. But Mm -hmm. if you really don't think that you can make the rest of the roster, pardon me, catch up uh, to Carson Wentz while Carson Wentz is still in his absolute prime, maybe you do something that would seem unthinkable for some. That's interesting. I I don't know. Never even crossed my mind that they would even. You're not going to win this way. They would think about it. You're not going to win this way. Look, they may make the playoffs this way simply because the division is so bad. But you're right. They're not winning this way. They're 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 one and done. You know, maybe they go on a magical run. No way. Uh, but I, no I, just, I just don't see it. They're beat no. up. Lane Johnson. I love the dude. He's a monster, super athlete, but he's so compromised physically right now. I, I feel bad for him. Yep. Um, he's obviously their right tackle. who just keeps going down. Um, you see him. You know, three plays in the game, he's laying on the ground. They're just they're just beat up, and they're and they're and they're young, and they they have you know. Players who they didn't expect to be playing, having being forced to play because they've had so many injury issues, and it feels good for them right now. They went on a Thursday night. That means they have you know an extra ten days to get ready for next week, and mm-hmm. uh, it just it feels it feels good. But if you actually dissect this Philadelphia Eagles team, there's not a ton to feel good about except for that last six minutes of the game. You give, you you scored ten points against the Giants. I know, right? I know. And then yes, it's home, but it doesn't matter. But still, you scored ten points against the Giants for the majority of that game and because And you needed a fifteen yard penalty late that's right to help you. That's right. Uh, that's right. and it was a questionable penalty, I thought. Tick, what do you think? Let, let's that's all you can say though. I mean, no, I know. He I know. won the game. He played tough. I yeah, I can't bury him because they won, but mm-hmm. God, he just doesn't look like the same guy that we were three years ago saying was gonna be an M V P. Take once he launched himself into the end zone in LA, mm-hmm. he hadn't been the same guy. That's right. Now they haven't been the same team, to be fair. True. And I can't be convenient when I say, well, you know, Sam Darnold's got nothing around them. That's why, you know, there are situations in the NFL where it might not be the sexiest radio conversation, but you've got to incorporate what is absent around said player. Mm-hmm. You have to, yeah. whether it's a lack of vertical weapons, whether it's a lack of time to make the right read from your offensive line, whether it's a defense that, you know, gets gashed and you're always playing from behind, whether it's an inept coaches or two or three of all those things I threw out there. They're in a rough spot. Um, I don't want to see him traded, but it, and I don't mean for this deadline. You don't throw something like that uh, of that magnitude so hastily together. This would be an off-season draft, um, com- if there's even a combine, combine kind of a thing. What do you think, if they were amenable to this, mm-hmm. you know, psychologically, if they could wrap their minds around the prospects of trading him, what could you get for Carson Wentz? Uh, you'd probably get a second rounder. He's good. That's it? Yeah. That's it. You're not getting first rounder for him. I think you'd get a first rounder no, for Carson I don't think Wentz. So. I don't think so. Yeah, because you he's, would. If, if, yeah, you would. Coming off of previous seasons, maybe. But he, he, he seems like he's, he's damaged right now. And so, and, and he should be because it's not like the system has changed significantly since he got there. So I don't, I don't think anyone's going to give up a first rounder for Carson. I don't mean the top ten. I mean the team yeah. at the bottom of the of the draft. Yeah, but they wouldn't want him. They wouldn't need him. So why not? It's interesting with quarterbacks. Other positions you can integrate right in. You know it's going to be a fit. But when you're trading a good player, um, who who has been a, a good player, and you you're essentially saying. He's going to be our leader. Yeah. There's something just off about it. Because I'm, I'm trying to think of the precedent of that happening and it working. And there there aren't very minim- many not, of them. Not, 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 not via trade. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. It's, it's, I know, I know. There just know. aren't very many of them. No, that's true. Um, but but the there's years. also more trade activity now than there's ever been. True. You have younger GMs who see the business differently. 
It's a little, it's not 1990. No trade, can't trade. Yeah. No trade, we can't do a trade. Mid-season trade, what is this, baseball? Click. I see, I see Guys that. With, trading. I see that with other positions No, any, any, any at any time, and I think it works, mm-hmm. right? And Egan Gakwe, who was traded, you know, with the, to the, uh, Baltimore or uh, but the Baltimore Ravens, as we talked about yesterday, that's a great trade for Baltimore. Yep, right. Um, I wouldn't. Have Who, by the guessed. way, was traded to the Vikings that's before right. that. So I wouldn't have guessed that that would have happened. It's yeah. a great trade. Yeah, and it, I think it was smart. It works for everybody. It's a win for everybody. Um, but you don't usually see it with quarterbacks. It's just it's just so rare. Because if you have a viable starter, yeah. First of all, you never let them hit free agency, much True. less trade them away. Okay. Oh, and listen. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it in the corner of the room and say I, I don't want to have to go and pick it up and, and readdress it at some point. I hope Carson starts balling. I like him. I, I do, uh, but I'm not going to say that that's a crazy notion based on where they are and based on the way he's playing. And by the way, he's doing this without 75,000 people, you know, mm-hmm. jamming down his. I mean, you know, full throated, borderline despondent over his play. If there were fans in the building, yeah. the way he's playing this year, the way he ended last, like it's it, it could get to that point. Forget about just from the on the the field of play where you might have to do something. But 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 we'll see. We shall see. Eagles get the win. Giant fans hang in there. Uh Tik and I both think you have the right coach. Drafted the wrong tackle, but whatever. <laughs> you just have to upgrade the roster. And uh, we both like Joe. Joe, Joe can coach. All right, coming up next here. This is going to be great. Tannehill, right? And King Henry. Can they knock off or can they even penetrate the seemingly impenetrable steel curtain? The new version. You know, the, the Titans-Steelers game to me, and, and I know I said this at least once on the air this week, astounding when I saw the stat that the Steelers are 5-0 and for the first time since 1978. It, yeah. it, it, like, you're almost desensitized to numbers and stats because there's so many of them. If you're on social media enough and, and you, you thoroughly, you know, you, you search for that stuff uh, and you're kind of a stat hound as, as I am. I love mm-hmm. those numbers for all sports. I think I've seen most of the stuff. That yeah. one stunned me. Uh, and here we are, the Steelers and the Titans. And I think you can make the case, take the two biggest injuries – not of the season because Bosa went down, Saquon mm-hmm. went down, but but for Devin Bush to go down, who yeah. is a, is a speed merchant, and for Taylor Lewan to go down, both last week, and now they're playing each other, both undefeated. This is going to be all sorts of nuts. I can't wait for this. Yeah, game. no, it makes for an interesting um, offensive scenario for the Tennessee Titans. What they're going to do now? They did. I mean, they they missed. I don't want to say they didn't miss Taylor Lewan because they they clearly they will. Um, but they played effective without him last week, and a lot of that's because their run game is so stout, and Ryan Tannehill is so veteran uh, that they didn't, they didn't, you didn't feel it immediately. That's also the Texans. Good point. <laughs> Very good point. And they, I mean, as much as we want to say that their defense is good, their defense is not nah. good like it used to be. No, nah. uh, it's like that's that's history. That's like the that's like the like the token Pro Bowl that you get because you used to go four uh-huh. or five times in a row. It's like yeah, yeah, let him in, let him in. JJ Watt in. Yeah, yeah. He's I know that name. Let's put yeah. him in once more. Yeah, no, but they're not that team any any longer. So that's a great point. The Pittsburgh Steelers, however, their defense is stout all across that front seven. Mm-hmm. So um, it's going to be a challenge for for Tennessee. But I suspect they're going to do what they always do. They're going to turn around. They're going to hand the ball. They're going to uh, you know uh, pass the ball and play action and keep it simple and and easy and just out physical you. I think the the bigger issue though is the Bush uh, injury for the, the Pittsburgh uh, Steelers. And the reason is because in today's NFL, uh, BT, you know this as well as I do, anybody who watches the game regularly, if you're not a not only a banger, meaning you can fill and you can you can read and react to, the, to run games, but more importantly, cover and not mm-hmm. be a liability and coverage when teams you know, try to throw the ball, uh, you, you, you are a valuable, as valuable a player as there is on that second level, that linebacker level. And that's what Bush was for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and now they got to replace them. Now, you know, could they be okay anyways because they're so deep and they're so good everywhere else? Maybe, but he's your, that's your quarterback, man. I was talking to Sean O'Hara the other day, and he, he made a great point. He, mm-hmm. was, he said the, the, the middle linebacker, like that position, is like, your, is like the offense's running back. 
or you know what I mean? He yeah. mirrors everything. He is. He's not, you know, like the difference maker, like the defensive end or whoever, you know, disrupts the pass, um, you know, the, the you know a quarterback. But he is like that anchor. And if you have a good one, like a really good one, like the Steelers do mm-hmm. uh, or did until he got hurt, it, it just makes everybody else's job easy. Just like if you have a good running back, like Derrick Henry on the Tennessee Titans side, it makes everybody else's job easier. And uh, the Steelers are going to miss him a lot. Unless I'm a little bit too married to the moment here, um, kind of pushing this thing through, I don't see a, 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 a more important game in terms of home field playoff consequence than perhaps the Steelers and the Ravens mm-hmm. down the road. Yeah. Am I missing anything? No. I mean, it, yeah, that one will be because it's it's a division game. They they have not. I got to look at the rest of the Chiefs' schedule too. But just true, th- but this I, is a big one. But they haven't played yet, right? The Steelers and the Ravens. So I think I think the Steelers and the Ravens may be, be uh, because they have to play each other twice. Mm-hmm. But I think I think you're right. And but I think as far as as our identification of who is that team that can challenge the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC, this game is the one that you that you, that you absolutely to, right. I've got the Steelers going to the Super Bowl. You yeah, know that, of course. But I got them going. But think about the Tennessee Titans last year. I mean, they they played the Chiefs, you know, well, and you know, and so at some point. Um, you know, it, they're going to, you know, be hankering to to best the champions. And so if the Tennessee Titans keep their momentum going, stay undefeated, uh, beat the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, clearly the Chiefs will be in their sights, will be within their reach, so to speak, at least in our mind as we conceptualize this. And so, you know, right now, this this is the most important game on the schedule. There may be more important ones down the line, especially because yeah. you get closer to the postseason and the division becomes more and more important. But right now, this is this is the game to watch of the weekend. That's a huge one for CBS. I can't wait for it. Let, let's let's hammer this out in thirty seconds here. Uh, my position last week, clearly realizing that there's a Russell Wilson and a Mahomes, and, mm-hmm. and that, that's probably it at this point because Josh Allen's dropped off, as yeah. has Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I think I'm missing somebody. But anyway, I said that Tannehill had at least entered the the very back end of the MVP, yeah. very back end yeah. of the MVP conversation. You propelled Derrick Henry mm-hmm. uh, into the top three, which which I don't think is crazy. Yeah. If if let's say if my guy or your guy yeah. has a game this weekend that is off, like Henry goes for two oh nine with two touchdowns or one seventy and two touchdowns, or Tannehill goes for three sixty, he runs one and he throws for three. Yeah. Can any of those two? Pl- could either of those oh, yeah. two players jump? To number one? Yeah, no, I think... Pass I think, Russell Wilson? Uh, well, uh, yeah, probably. Go ahead. Um, and, and the reason is because of who they're playing. Because it would be against a, a a viable, like a truly viable, great defense uh, with the, that the Steelers have. They're opportunistic. First of all, they're tough as hell. They're, they're aggressive. They, they take advantage of your mistakes, as we saw last week against the Browns. Um, so this defense is as good as there is in the National Football League right now. So... Yes, if the, if Derrick Henry has his way with the Steelers, then Derrick Henry is only going to further uh, our belief that he's the best runner back in, in football right now. If Brian mm-hmm. Tannehill, you know, uh, avoids you know pressure because they're going there's going to be pressure. Bud Dupree is going to get there. T.J. Watt's going to get there. Tuitt's going to get there. Right, these guys are going to be on top of, of of Ryan Tannehill in the backfield. Now, if he finds ways to outsmart it, out you know, athletic it, and make throws down the field anyways, and throws for three touchdowns and th- three hundred and twenty yards, as you were just mentioning, BT, yeah, mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna our eyes are gonna keep popping open about with Ryan Tannehill, just like they did last year That's when right. he started making all those great plays, and it felt like an anomaly. Like this is this is this can't be the Ryan Tannehill. This is Ryan Tannehill. Uh, you got to start believing in Ryan Tannehill because he's no joke right now. I agree. I mean, I, I do believe in him. Yeah. Um, not that I didn't think I'd believe in him to this degree, but I had, there was no chance you could have told me two years ago that Ryan Tannehill would have this resurrection. Nobody would have saw that. I don't think his wife saw that coming. <laughs> Honestly, right. I don't think she did. I believe in you, honey. <laughs> yeah, wink, we've, done, wink. We've, we've done well already, you right? You did great, honey. You're doing great. Sure, you're doing great. You give a little, the, the, like the, the consolatory <laughs> pat on the Sure, honey, we're doing great. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified when we drop fresh content.